welcome, I'm Dragon, and today I will be showing you how to make a baseball destroy glass using Blender Rigid Body Physics Simulations. Let's get into it. First make a simple baseball and baseball bat. For the baseball, I start off by using a cube and then adding subdivision and then applying it. Then I go in and select areas and hit command B for the bevel tool and then select vertexes, then go bevel the edges and then extrude outward lines to make it look more like a baseball. It's not exact and it's not perfect, but it was quick and easy for what I wanted. Then for the bat, I added a sphere and extruded the top parts upward and it did the trick. And now let's add physics to the baseball and the baseball bat so that we can knock the baseball far away and actually have the bat hit the baseball. To do this, rotate the bat into a batting position and then animate it swinging so that it actually would hit a baseball if a baseball was in that area. And be sure to change the keyframes handle type to vector. And now the baseball bat is animated, but as you can see the speed may need to be adjusted depending on if the ball can actually be hit, because sometimes with physics simulations it goes too fast and the ball will go right through. Now to animate the baseball. What I personally did was move the baseball to where I want the ball to actually be hit by the baseball bat. Also make sure it's on the correct keyframe, otherwise that could mess you up. And then I duplicated the ball and moved it into a different area where I'm going to have the ball fa fly from and hit the baseball bat. I then moved to frame 1 and animated the ball that I duplicated and moved into a different area. I then moved to the frame that I wanted it to hit the baseball bat and animated that one at the same position that the ball that I originally placed near the baseball bat was at. Now that it was animated, I deleted the original baseball, and here is the animation so far. Very simple, but now we get to add physics. So first I added the physics to the baseball by going to the physics tab and hit, hitting rigid body. From there, I went down and hit animated and be sure to, that you're on frame 1. Then I moved to frame 5 and animated it again, hit the animating keyframe on the animate button in the physics tab, then moved over another keyframe and turned it off. And with that, you get this. As you can see, the ball just goes flying. That's because we haven't added it to the baseball bat. So hit rigid body on the baseball bat and then hit animate. After you hit type to passive. And then you can change the shape to mesh. Or you can hit a different shape if you don't want it to be as exact and you want it to be a little bit faster. And you can see when I play it back, it doesn't really work because the ball was going too fast. So we have to adjust the speed a little bit on the animation. After you've adjusted the speed, you may see that the ball goes straight downward or goes in the wrong direction. If that's the case, then you can move the position to position it in a more correct area where it hits the bat. And you could see once I did all that, the ball didn't really do anything, it just went a little ways and then started falling. So to fix that, I found out that you have to go to surface response and crank up bounce on both the bat and the ball to as high as it will go, which is one. And with the bounce enabled, you can see the ball went flying. Now with the baseball going flying, we can now put a window in the ball's path. So be sure to go over to the ball and design either a window or maybe a house if you're wanting and then just have a window in its path. To do this, you can just need to make sure that the window is separate from the actual house or what a window frame. And here's mine sped up. So there you go, a very simple window and window frame. Now you can hide the window frame and you can see that I have this, but if we were to have the ball actually hit it, once we added physics, it would just bounce off the ball. But as of right now, it actually just goes through it because we haven't added physics at all. 
So to get that shattered glass effect, we actually need to go get an add-on. This add-on uh, makes it so that we can crack the glass easier than doing it manually, which would take forever. This add-on is actually already installed with Blender, so all we need to go to is Edit Preferences and search for Cell Fracture. If you don't have it checked, then check it. Otherwise, if you're like me, then you've already used it. To use this add-on, you go to the Annotate tool and change the placement to Surface, and then you can actually draw on your object that you're wanting to crack open. So as you can see, I'm drawing very a lot in the area that the baseball is actually going to hit and then drawing a little bit less on the outer areas that is because the cracks will form where you're actually drawing which is actually pretty cool then once you've drawn a decent amount with the annotate tool you can hit fn f3 and search for cell fracture when you do this big pop-up will pull up and the only thing you really need to change is the source limit which is how many pieces it will break into. I personally go for like 150 to 200. And the only other thing I would recommend changing is where it says scene collection. I would put it in a collection. I end up doing this later manually, which takes a little bit longer. Then you can hit OK. And as you can see, when it finishes loading, I now have a whole bunch of pieces. Now we can delete all those annotate lines by going into notes and hitting the minus sign. Then we can go back into selection mode. Now select a piece and hit rigid body to add the physics to it. And leave everything on default other than going down to deactivation, checking that, and adding start deactivation. Now we just need to copy those settings to all those other pieces that we have. So you could do this manually, but that would take a while and be very inefficient. Instead, you can just make sure that that is the active selection and select all the other pieces and go to objects, rigid body, and copy from active. And with them all still selected, you can go to Object and Rigid Body and Calculate Mass. And I go choose Broken Glass, but you can choose whatever you're wanting it to be. And when I play the animation, everything just falls because I forgot to add Rigid Bodies to Physics to the thing that's holding the window. So I go and select the thing that's holding the window and add Rigid Body Physics and change it to Passive so that it won't fall. And because we checked start deactivation, the pieces will not fall until the baseball actually hit it, which happens right here. And you can see that the pieces fall, but because I actually have another board, because the, when we add the cell fracture add-on, it duplicates it and adds those pieces. So I go and hide that, and then it looks good, as you can see. I then go and create a simple glass material, but I didn't really like that, so I changed it to this. I then go and add a simple HDRI and put it in the background. I then render a sing single image to see how it looks. And like I expected, the cell fracture add-on did split the glass, but it split the glass even when it's not really, the baseball hasn't hit it yet, which isn't really what we're going for. So to fix that, you can do this. So with the big glass piece that isn't split up, you can go animate it by going into the object properties and go in under visibility where it says show in viewports and renders and animate that so that when the ball hits it, it is not visible anymore, but the frame beforehand, it is visible. And then we can make the shards become visible when the big sheet becomes invisible. And we can do this with drivers. And the e easiest way to do it quickly is by adding an empty and then applying the empty properties onto all the little shards. But first we've got to animate the empty's visibility. And we're animating it in the complete opposite way that we animated the big glass sheet because we want the thing to become visible when the ball hits the glass. And once the empty is animated, we can copy as driver. Then we can go and select one of the shards and then copy as driver on both the viewports and the renders. And we have to do this twice. And if all of a sudden the shard is invisible, that means that the driver did work. It's just that we are in a frame before the baseball hit the glass. So you can go ahead of the, where the baseball hit so then you can actually see it and then select all of the shards and then hit command L and copy the animation data. And with that, I added a texture to the window frame, and we're all done. Here is the end result. Rendered in cycles.
Well, there you have it. I hope you found this tutorial useful, and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Bye! Oh, and by the way, here's what the glass looked like before I did the updated texture.